Are you are you drinking beer? Yeah, I got some PBRs here in front of me. All I have is this fine Coca Cola right here. You know, nothing wrong with that. Well, actually, I think uh, from from what he said, you also have uh, some carrot cake in front of you as well. Oh shit! Yeah, I'm <laughs> eating some carrot cake right here right now. Fuck yeah, I'm just I'm really letting letting my fly my freak flag fly right now. You know, I just. <laughs> Um, anyways, enough of that cornball stuff. Uh, I'll let you start with the uh, the interviewer. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I, I never know how to start with these. Like our You're, friend yeah. uh, Steve, like we did behind the vinyl, and it was so funny. It was just like we bullshitted for like probably 15 minutes, and he's like, "All right, now let's go." <laughs> <laughs> Those are always like interesting too, because like I've talked to people for like we'll have like 10 to 15 minutes of just really good banter. And then I'm like, Oh shit. Like we haven't even started or gotten into anything. Uh, how do I incorporate any of this back into the episode? Um, but, uh, what I'll do here is I'll crack, uh, one of these beers, do the little intro and then bring both of you in. Cool. Sounds good, dude. All right. Sweet. Three, two, one. Welcome to the Beers of Bands podcast with your host, Michael Torres. What is up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Beers of Bands. This week, I'm sitting down with a couple of dudes from the band Dosser. How are y'all doing? Great. How are you? I'm, dude, I'm doing great. It's, I mean, unfortunately, it is Monday, but I'm already off work, have some beers in front of me talking to a band so you know things are looking up yes i agree (laughs) beer i have carrot cake and a coca-cola but you know (laughs) i'm partying (laughs) i uh i cracked open a corona pony i found in my fridge and little little baby (laughs) yeah a little little baby corona i love it (laughs) it's it's just enough to make you want another one right (laughs) yep uh like i mentioned uh y'all are from the band dosser uh for people that might not be aware dosser is a like 90s alternative grunge style uh i think it, it also on the instagram it's like the loudest rock and roll band in baltimore um i mean you guys are put out a, a new full length this year which we'll talk about but before we get too far in uh can you say who you are and what you do in dosser go for it yeah. will uh, I'm Will. I play guitar and I do vocals in Dosser. Uh, I'm Brett and I also play guitar and I also do vocals in Dosser. It's kind of a we we co sing and play and write, so it's kind of like split fifty fifty between me and Will. I mean, I've I've seen that done other with other bands, and I always like that dynamic, uh, just because you kind of get like it almost takes the band into two forms. You get obviously you'll have like will's form and then you'll have your form um but at the end of the day they're both still the same band so it's kind of cool when that happens yeah i have a lot of my favorite bands are like that too like uh fugazi is a huge influence on me and has been since i was like a teenager and uh i always like the whole oh you know that's an ian song or oh you know that's a Kyoto song or you know but they still write together so there's a lot of like influence flowing in between their songs and you know it's cool you get a little bit different flavor also will and i are both really into this band heat miser which is elliot smith's first band and he like co-wrote with another guy and you can kind of hear some inspiration from that band definitely in our band so yeah i always feel like shit that i don't know other guys name (laughs) (laughs) i do what's his name I think you cut out a second. Elliot Smith is the one guitarist and singer, and then Neil Gust is the second guitarist and singer. Okay. But Elliot just got bigger in the solo, so everybody forgot about the other guy. But Neil Gust actually has a solo thing called, the band is called Number Two, and okay. it got totally overshadowed by Elliot Smith. But if you like Elliot Smith, check out Number Two. That's a cool band. They're similar vibes. Not as good as Elliot Smith, but now when with that like dynamic between both of you you know bringing songs to the table and like co-writing and like getting them formed do you guys have like a 
like an unwritten rule of like, oh, William brought this song to the table. It's his song. He has to sing it. Yeah, kind of. Uh, yeah, basically. It, it like it's funny. Like I play in another band where there might be like more bickering about that, but with me and Brett, it was kind of just like immediately because of like what bands we were drawing influence of that like we talked about before. We just kind of knew like, oh yeah, like on a song that I'll bring to the table, Brett will just take over leads pretty much completely. And then on a song Brett's singing and playing on, maybe I do some of the stuff that he doesn't feel so comfortable singing and playing at the same time. So it's, uh, you know, it works out really well. And it's like way less pressure to be like yeah. the front man, you know. I don't think we've ever actually talked about it until now. Like we just, <laughs> just started, <laughs> we started playing in this band and then, you know, it just, I don't know, it just seemed natural for me to sing on the songs that I wrote and him to sing on the songs that he wrote. But it's not, you know everybody in the band kind of brings their own thing to like whatever song he may write or whatever song I may write. But we just, I guess we felt most comfortable singing on the, the songs that we came to the table with. And so until now, we've never had this conversation. So, well, next song you write, dude, I'm singing on it. Okay. Let's <laughs> yeah, we'll just, we'll just fuck the whole flow up. <laughs> yeah. We can do some three. Wait, what do you say? I said we can do some 311 shit. <laughs> uh, well, Brett, you did mention, uh, obviously, we are uh, missing a couple of the members tonight. Uh, I, like, my bad for not remembering to bring this up, but who are they and what do they do in Dosser? Oh, that's cool, man. Um, so, uh, Will and I both play guitar and sing. Then we have Max Dietrich on the drums and Eric Dudley on the bass. Uh, they hold it down for us. Eric's bass lines are so booming that sometimes it, my um, my testicles when we're at practice, it's so low end it just my it, 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 his bass has the power to rupture <laughs> people hernias. So you know, that's that's pretty impressive. That needs to go out on a resume or something. Yeah. I'm not kidding. Like the first couple practices we had, his bass was so loud that I literally had to like stop and be like, "Oh shit, hold on, dude." Actually, oh god, I think, oh, my my nut hurts, dude. Like, it was just like yeah. so. Yeah, that's that's a real story. I can't uh, like get too like high or anything before sets. Like one time, there's this hilariously like embarrassing story where I eat a strong edible before a set. And his bass is so loud, it was like shaking my guitar strings because it was in this really tiny room, and it just freaked me the fuck out. Like I was <laughs> like, "This is like complete overstimulation." So I don't need edibles before Dosser sets. <laughs> it, well, you just have to like get used to it. Yeah, yeah. Busy. So <laughs> but anyway, yeah, those are the other guys. Don't drums. Max's drums have the power to, you know, physically harm you as well, but. <laughs> Yeah, um, I call him I call him FIFA foot because he just has like this like <laughs> soccer player foot. It's like if you don't have something extremely heavy in front of it, like two cinder blocks, like that thing's just oh the whole thing just slides forward. Yeah, slides forward, yeah. yeah, it's gonna hit someone in, <laughs> right in the front. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I, I want to bring up a couple things before we get into the the full LP. Um, in January of 2021, you released your first EP uh, called Brain Scan, which people haven't listened to it yet. Please go check it out. Uh, it's super sick. Uh, there is records still, and we'll kind of talk about that stuff in a little bit. Um, but it's a nice, like, kind of gateway into what Dosser is. Um, leading up to the, the full length, uh, you released three singles, Joy Thief, Kids, and Dark Air, which mm -hmm. personally I feel like are like i listened to the full album uh in its entirety and then i realized oh these were the these were the three singles that came out which i felt like those three singles were perfect uh representations as to what this album is because you kind of get a different feel on each one of those songs as to uh what dosser is fully capable of if you aren't uh if you hadn't checked out the ep um i mean you got like kind of like a, a little bit more like kids is like that funner uh little bit fast-paced more song um 
Joy Thief and Dark Air kind of have like the are a little bit on the other side of the spectrum, but I thought those were very nice ways to kind of lead up to this to this LP. Yeah, um, I think uh, yeah, I mean we deliberately picked those songs, pro- probably for the reasons that you're talking about. Um, I think the first song, the first two songs we released were joy thief and kids and those are the we thought those kind of represented the two leaning spectrums of the album pretty well like Mm -hmm. joy thief is a little bit it's probably the most radio friendly sounding song on the album but it also has like some of the darkest lyrics on the album um so we thought that was probably a good nice little first taste and then kids is like like I don't know, like Deftones meets like Midwest emo. So it's like really catchy and like has like a fucking bounce beat. So it's like, you know, you can't like not nod your head when you're listening to it. And so, um, yeah, that made sense. And then Dark Air was just kind of like, we needed a third single and we're like, oh, I guess we'll just do like a slower song. So we actually have another single coming out called Inertia which i mean it's all it's the last song on the album but um we just finished a video for it and uh that one's intense i mean that's like probably the most intense song on the album so i'm excited for people to, uh you know when you release things in single format they get pushed a little harder on like the streaming platforms and stuff so i'm excited for that to come out and you know i guess if people haven't heard the album i feel like that's pretty good representation of it as well oh yeah uh, well, kind of just jumping right into this album, uh, which two things. One, I really loved that. Uh, I'm sure it wasn't a coincidence that you almost released it two years to the date as the first EP, uh, which I thought that was kind of cool to do. Um, and then obviously th- this LP is called Violent Picture, Violent Sound. Uh, it is nice 10 song uh, LP that just kind of takes you on this amazing ride uh through i don't know so like so many emotions like you're talking about like how joy thief is has like these darker lyrics obviously we get to kids kind of pumps it up a little bit and then you just kind of let the rest of it take you where it wants to take you for the rest of the album yeah Yeah. thank you yeah i i think um you know it's like when we were touring with pianos mike was like we were still deciding what songs to do as singles kind of as we went. I think we knew Joy Thief and Kids should be the first two, but the other two, we were like, I don't know. Like, there's so many other songs to choose from. And he was like, don't pick all rockers. Like, pick one mm-hmm. that's, like, maybe a little slower and different and then pick, like, just one that's just totally fucking weird. And I think, you know, we followed that advice. And it was good advice. I think people seem to like <laughs> that kind of format. Um, but it's really crazy. Like I remember when Title Fight put out, I think it was Floral Green that had Head in the Ceiling fan on it. I remember like the, I was like, "What the fuck? This is too slow." And then the rest <laughs> of the album is obviously like a Title Fight album that's fast and crazy. And then I'm like, "Oh, that song does sit well in the mix." So that's why I'm glad like we put Dark Air third because people might have been like, "What the hell? Like this song's so slow." Or like something with Inertia when people hear that, like mm-hmm. until it like beefs up, just like Dark Air, you might be like, "Wait." Like this is a Dosser song, so yeah. yeah. In comparison to the first album, yeah. Well, the first album we wrote and recorded like immediately, um, and we were still pretty new at playing together as a band, so you can hear it. It's much more loosey goosey, and um, like I don't think we kind of had like a format for songs as well as we do yet. I mean, I think the first album's cool. I like those songs, but they're, you know, you can tell it was just like a, we were just kind of getting cohesive. Whereas this album, we wrote it pretty much at the beginning of the pandemic. And then we just had the entire pandemic, like lockdown to just play the same songs over and over and over and over and over again. till like, you know, some of the songs morphed a little bit because we just had so much time to sit on them. And by the time we recorded it, we were just like, you know, I mean, you just sit, play the same shit over and over again. It becomes really, uh, I don't know, cohesive. And I'm not saying the album's like super tight, but like, 
you can hear it. It's, you know, we, you can hear that we spent a lot more time on it, which I think is cool. I think uh, sound wise, the album sounds much better than the first one, which is also thanks to John Markson who produced it. Um, he does like all the drug church and, um, you know, he just did the last drain record and shit. So um, it's cool to have him on our side because in the scheme of things, uh, he does much, much bigger bands than us. So um, he, we have we have him to thank for the way it sounds for the most part. But as far as like the flow of the album that you're talking about, um, I think that was a pretty conscious effort because the first album kind of has like, or the EP brain scan has like kind of one sound the whole time, you know, mm -hmm. go too much in any direction. But this album, yeah, I mean, we all grew up listening to the, the, the alt rock grunge greats. Like, you know, for me, um, I always wanted to do something and I'm in no way comparing this album to the one I'm about to name, but like Soundgarden super unknown to me is like a complete masterpiece because it's like, it just goes all over the fucking place. Like two songs might sound the same and then the rest of it just sounds fucking, I don't know, it's insane. So I always wanted to kind of do an album that, you know, went up and down and up and down and up and down. And so, and again, in no way am I comparing our fucking sound. <laughs> yeah. no. It's okay. I was, I was going to say melancholy and infinite sadness, but like well, yeah. way shorter. <laughs> you know, all that stuff, you know, we're, we're like products of the nineties. So it's like, no, you know, it's no surprise that our fucking music sounds like this. Yeah. No, uh, like I, I really enjoyed not having like one cohesive sound. Um, you know, a lot of, a lot of times with those EPs or albums, you can kind of get like just lost in like by song four, you're like, Oh, like when, where's the change up? Like if I've just been listening yeah. to the same song this entire time, um, yeah. Whereas I've, this, you know, you, you kind of get... Or so, you know, it's... I've been in bands like that before where I wasn't writing the song, so it's cool that, like, now I can, like, be the dude at least half the time that's like, actually, let's fucking totally change it up. Right. Not that the album's yeah. not... Like, you can tell each song is, you know, a Dosser song, but, you know, I think it's there's, there's a little bit of something-something for everyone. Yeah, there's yeah. just those little amount of tweaks throughout where you kind of it it like you said it is still a Dosser album, but every song kind of has its own little uniqueness to it. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a good way to put. It. Yeah, and I really I think like in addition to like having a '90s sound, and I feel like I forgot to say this last time, but it's like I almost wanted to. I think we wanted to like bring that into the 2020s you know like because like there's like newer bands doing stuff like i grew up more on the like uh like punk or pop punk side of things um brett i guess i your previous stuff was like grunge to almost like noise rock i don't know what do you call room runner noise rock or what would you call that yeah i, I like, love room runner but I, yeah, I, like, I never knew how to categorize you guys yeah grungy like noise rock basement fucking garage i don't know just it was yeah. like like that was sort of catchy but too fucking noisy for most people <laughs> and then we both love metal so like that's why we tuned our guitars down a full step and a half and it sounds so like low um so i don't know it's kind of like drawing a lot of influence but definitely like i'd say the main yeah thing is definitely the 90s thing but i always like to mention like oh yeah like also you know there's these other elements we kind of try to well yeah you know? there's obvious yeah there's obvious it's like so like touching what will just said um about us tuning like we made kind of a conscious decision at first i feel like maybe it was kind of a joke but like me and will both grew up or especially me like i was obsessed with corn when i was a kid like when they were still coming out like in the 90s like back when they were like nothing sounded like that before and they were like one of the most aggressive heavy bands you've ever heard i'm not talking about present day or like 2000 corn because that shit fucking blows but like 90s corn is like you've no you've never heard anything like that like all the bands that play seven eight fucking nine string shit now they owe all that to corn and this is like a teeny tiny little ode to uh you know just 
we wanted we tr we wanted to make alt rock that was like had like a little baby nod to like the new metal glory days <laughs> you know what i mean so we yeah. tuned it all like down like most of our songs are in B, which is a fuck is what a seven string is tuned in, but we're playing on Stratocasters. So it's like, you know what I mean? And you wouldn't be able, you know, only people that actually like play guitar will point that out to us and be like, holy shit, what do you, wait, you guys are tuned like really low. Like, yes, you, you caught it, but it's only like here and there. But, you know, I think that's like another thing. It kind of, it, you know, maybe gives us our own in an otherwise like sea of other bands maybe playing a lot of 90s revival shit like well, i guess we consciously were like well maybe we could try to be a little bit less um rip offish because i'm always afraid that i'm coming off as like i'm ripping other bands off yeah it was kind of a frankenstein situation and i'm glad it was received well because at first i was like eh, am i just are we making like a band's band, you know, something yeah. that like a listener might be like, this doesn't make sense. But I think unless we wrote like a ska part into like a breakdown, I think uh, we'll be okay. <laughs> I hate ska. I'm never going to write it. Yeah. That, that, was a, that was a direct uh, diss on yeah. me. <laughs> Will and Eric and the band know how much I can't stand ska. So they're trying to like, you know, we'll just be a practice. Start playing fucking like the mighty money. But he actually, we just we played a show at American College last Friday. And it was fucking awesome. And then Will just starts playing fucking uh, what's the song? But I know the impression that I get. Yeah, but, yeah. The hit. Actually, yeah. that might be the only ska song that I actually like can sort of get behind. <laughs> it's catchy. Sorry, that went off the rails. I don't know what the fuck we were even talking about. No, you get. Uh, I'm always down for tangents to see where they go, and I now we now the people know that you're not a fan of ska, and just to stop bringing up ska around you if they're at a show. <laughs> actually, or to keep the, doing it to make me laugh. Yeah, <laughs> at the show that I just mentioned. I'm pretty sure you played that and you stopped, and I just said "fuck ska" into the microphone, and the kid that was directly. <laughs> Of me looked fucking appalled. He was like, what? You? And then I had to like be like, oh no, I'm just kidding. Cause then I thought like the crowd was gonna turn on me. <laughs> it's got a back, you know, like it's like it's on its like fifth wave or something. It was yeah. dead for a bit, but now like I've been seeing it happen again. Like that dude that does like Scottune Network and stuff. And I'm happy that people are having fun and you know. I was like, I really thought it was like a thing that just like phased out, you know, like hard. But I guess I don't know. We're having that, and then maybe we'll all get eyebrow rings or something. So I don't Dude. know. I, <laughs> I used to have really long hair and three eyebrow rings. I'll bring the eyebrow. <laughs> I mean, speaking of like the Scott revival thing, my uh, one of my good friends got married last year, and after the ceremony, they had a. Uh, a cocktail hour but they called it a scocktail hour so <laughs> they just they just played ska the entire time during the cocktail hour and it was it was very it, the amount of white people i saw uh just skanking the entire yeah. night was just I was gonna say, i've never seen it was anyone in a checkered suit <laughs> <laughs> no uh no one was in checkered suit but like we did uh like all the groups we got like checkered uh sunglasses <laughs> Hell um, yeah. and we all had like brand new like black and white vans not checkered vans thankfully yeah but <laughs> we were pretty close i think i'm just being curmudgeon i don't actually hate ska it's just like will and eric have to like talk about it all the time and i just have to be the opposing person you know <laughs> wouldn't it be funny if i was like secretly fucking obsessed with ska and i was just <laughs> I, i've been doing this bit too long Right, like he gets up right now to like go to the bathroom or something, and the like he's just got like a giant ska flag behind him. <laughs> yeah, I get up, my fucking boxers are checkered. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, hey man, it's punk. It's the only punk rock adjacent music you can dance to, really, man. <laughs> I mean, everyone's only like a like a mid two step away from just ganking, anyways, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they do yeah, look. 
they do look suspiciously close. Like if you really look, <laughs> dudes hardcore shows and shit. True. I was just, yeah, you can dance to some hardcore. Hardcore's gotten especially more dancey now. I would say definitely yeah. a lot more booty shaking beats going on in hardcore, which isn't a bad thing, but. Yeah. Kind of jumping back into uh, into the record, uh, you released three music videos so far. We did talk about how Inertia is going to have it, its music video coming out. Um, do you know when that music video is coming out? 420, baby. 420. So, <laughs> uh, hell yeah. Uh, by the time this episode's out, that uh, that music video will already be out. So, hopefully, it's already got like 10 billion views along with all the rest of the music videos. Um, hey. But kind of... And jumping back, obviously we talked about how Joy Thief was the first single. Uh, it, it it does have, I mean, it's the first song off the record, does have some darker tendencies. Uh, and Brett, we kind of just follow you in this music video, uh, you know, doing some shady stuff. Uh, you, you're, oh, yeah. you haven't seen it, like, you're, you're just covered in blood, you're putting some stuff in, your, in the trunk of your car, and then you yeah. go to a party and, no, surprisingly, no one's freaked out at all. Yeah. They're talking to you as you're just covered in blood. Um, yeah. Uh, which I thought was very interesting. Uh, I mean, it's t- that music video still came out super sweet. Um, but Thank I do you. have to ask, like, you're pouring in that uh, that one scene, you're just pouring copious amounts of blood on you. Yeah. How terrible was that to, like, rinse off at all? Because I'm sure it, that was just, like, corn syrup and, like, a mixture of something, right? Sucked. It was actually... <laughs> uh, it was some... Some like Halloween store fake blood, mm. like probably just a bunch of fucking chemicals and shit. Um, it looked real enough, but it tasted fucking horrible, dude. Like I couldn't get that taste out of my mouth for like days, and it stained my skin red. Oh. So at the time, I was working for a job where I was like having to talk to customers like one on one, and they were all like, "What the fuck is what happened to you?" <laughs> Like, oh, um, I didn't, like, know what to say because I, I couldn't explain all the things you just said. Like, so I'm in a band. I filmed a video where it kind of looks like I may have murdered somebody. But, like, you know what I mean? And then, like, I finally I had still shots from, like, the, the, the shoot or the video. So I would, like, show, like, I was buddy-buddy enough with some of the customers. I was like, no, here, like, I play in a band and this is, you know, but walking around for like a week and we did it twice we had two separate shoots where i had to get covered in blood like weeks apart oh and so each time we did it for at least like four or five maybe maybe six days you know i would scrub every night in the shower just to try to get it off and a little bit would come off at a time so my hands were just like stained like this like weird pink red color for a while and people were just fucking looking at me like constantly wherever i was going so it was not worth it uh and then obviously uh kids was the next single and you do a completely opposite music video you're all having a great uh time a bunch of these punk kids just having a water balloon fight uh while like will kind of stands in the forefront and just like sings all these lyrics um I especially loved the the collective group uh shotgun towards the end. Oh so, yeah. That yeah. friendly moment. Um I couldn't but, get I mean, my beer open, man. <laughs> yeah, fun story. Brett actually uh he couldn't get it open and then got frustrated halfway through and he punted it, but you don't see it. Uh my fiance got hit with the beer. <laughs> he punted <laughs> it and then it hit my fiance on accident. He didn't notice she was in the line of fire. She didn't have those, like, you know, like Keanu Reeves, like Matrix moves to, like, you know. <laughs> she just, it was fun. Everybody was already getting soaked. It was hilarious. I mean, it was, it was a really fun time. I remember a little tipsy. Yeah, just like, what do you say? That everybody at that point, when she got hit by the, the punted beer, everybody was a little tipsy. So I think it was all right. Yeah. No, everything was fine. Um, the only thing that sucked was uh, my buddy Carl, who's like a really buff firefighter guy. I don't even know if this made the shot. He it threw didn't. that fucking balloon so hard and it hit me right in the ear. I couldn't hear for like half the vocal take. Like my hearing came back in like five minutes, but it was funny because I had to just keep going with a straight face and like pretend like I wasn't like 
holy shit, <laughs> like what happened? But, I was, I was, yeah. one, I didn't, I don't think I met him, but I was wondering, I saw him like wind up and fuck. <laughs> Like hit you with a balloon in the face like throwing it like a baseball pitcher i was like yeah. dude does this kid have some like secret fucking hate for will and it's like <laughs> now this opportunity to like get him back in a way that like may seem like he didn't do it on purpose but then yeah i guess i guess it was your friend so it was just friendly fire yeah yeah i think he's like you know like i said he's a he's a buff boy and he like plays rugby and shit so i just think yeah. you know just used to taking a hit probably more yeah. than i <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah that was a fun meeting. we just like basically hung out and fucking partied for a couple hours and invited a bunch of our friends out and you know poured yeah. pain on will and hit him with water balloon. yeah it was a good day it was a really good day yeah i mean those ones are always fun just kind of like let loose and just like have a good time uh yeah you're you're doing the work of doing this video but at the same time it's just like hey we're gonna fuck around and just <laughs> see what happens and use generally most of this footage no matter what yeah, yeah. pretty much <clears throat> yeah i was happy it came together the way it did um yeah i used to go to that park and it was just so fun like i don't know like because like there's always people there just kind of partying in the background and it was pretty funny to watch them see these group of, like you said, like rock and roller, punk, whatever people come together in this park that probably they normally wouldn't go to, like as a large group. And so like all these people that live in the neighborhood were just like laughing at us, like that we're just like smoking blunts in the background or like having beers like in the distance, just like, what the hell are all these people like doing here? Why are they like blasting this weird? Because that's the thing is like the song when you do a music video you have to play it double time so basically it's well like night, when you, when you do, or some shit <laughs> when you do, when you do a video in slow motion you're playing it double time so when you're singing it looks like it's fucking you know, i don't know the song sounds like alvin and the chipmunks sped up and that's what's like thing for him to try to like sing to so it oh, sounds gotcha. sounds fucking unhinged like if <laughs> Yeah, you didn't even get to hear the the inertia one. It was so weird because that one's not quite in four four, so it almost sounded like polka beat some shit or I don't know. It was weird <laughs> as fuck. It was really funny. And that song's so like serious and dark, and I had to like you know try to keep it straight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I can totally hear that. Yeah, that's uh, fun. No, I know at the time of this recording, we're about three weeks out from uh the nurture video coming out but like what's obviously when this comes out it'll already be out but like what's the storyline for for that song um yeah i mean so the video uh our friends amanda and mike put together i would give amanda most of the credit for coming up with the concept um the song is just kind of about like confronting your mortality and um like she made these puppets they were really neat out of cardboard. Um, they're uh, like a mica graduate and just very talented with that kind of stuff. And they wanted to try their hand at, um, I don't know if I'd call it stop motion, but it was more like a uh, puppetry, but it was really interesting to see how it worked. Like, um, so basically one part of it's like animation and the other part is me walking, but this like skeleton they made walking through the woods. It's kind of emulating me walking through the woods and the shots kind of pan back and forth. It's really neat. I'm really excited for it. And that just kind of like, you know, serves as an, I guess, illusion or whatever to, uh, yeah, like, you know, just like walking around and like, you know, trying to keep your shit together and stay sane while like having this like glooming, like existential dread sometimes, but like you still have to like, you know, go to work and like take care of your family and friends and all that and like do what you, but sometimes you do just feel like this like goofy skeleton just like walking around <laughs> doing tasks so it's kind of like darkly humorous in a way almost i'd say uh but yeah sweet well i'm stoked uh for it to come out on 420 you know maybe you know <laughs> holidays partake a little bit check it yeah. out uh, <laughs> do it the right way right yeah yeah i think it would be a good stoner video i think <laughs> <laughs> uh obviously like you guys mentioned most of these songs were written kind of pre-pandemic he took most of the pandemic to kind of flush them out um and inertia is still going to be coming out the least music video will be coming out in uh in april 
but this record has been out for at this time of this recording a little over two months um like what what do you guys got up your guys' sleeves for the future any new like we started working on anything new any tours coming up yeah uh i'll let brett talk about the next thing song wise because he came up with that idea and i think he's really excited for it oh yeah um yeah we're gonna um we sorry i just had a brain fart we <laughs> we're uh dude i can't talk right now so so many sorry. Dude. i know <laughs> It's the well, carrot cake. cake, yeah. yeah oh, carrot okay. cake. Sugar's going on my head. Also, <laughs> I'm deprived, but that's always, I'm always sleep deprived. All right. Now, so we're recording two covers, which I never do in bands, um, but I think it'll be tight. Um, we're going to do, I guess, it's not like a fucking surprise or anything. So this, this does come out at the end of May, if that makes any difference. Yeah, I don't know when it's going to come out, to be honest with you, but yeah, we're going to do them out just for fun um like some shoegazed like noisy grungy versions of songs that are not that at all okay. so we're gonna do like a like a down tune slower version of uh head over heels by tears for fears which will be tight do uh a cranberry song um what song is it uh Will? dreams that was Dream. my choice yeah yeah my cranberries yeah. so that'll be tight that's just like a little fun thing, like segue into like the next thing. But um, uh, as far as like new stuff, we have studio time booked with the same guy that did this record, John Markson. Um, we're going to go in and record two songs, just like not covers, but two songs, two new okay. dossers. And uh, we'll probably just get those out on streaming platforms just to keep the ball rolling. And then we'll probably you know, push those into whatever the next LP is that comes out. But uh, yeah, we've, we've loosely started dabbling in new songs. I'm always, I have, you can't see it, but behind me is my room full of amps and guitars, my, my fucking like guitar bunker. And um, I pretty much just sit in here and record and play guitar like all the time. Like if you, if you find me on Instagram, it's just nothing but, videos of me making weird fucking guitar loops and shit so i'm like perpetually writing so i've just kind of switched off the writing goofy ass little loops that make me laugh into writing dosser songs and um they're kind of like i'm kind of like shitting them out not that they're coming out fast and i'm not putting any thought into them but i think i was just like so ready to start writing songs for this band again because like i said we wrote all the songs for the record shit probably like two and a half years ago now three years that like i'm just like writing all these songs I'm like oh god i want to fucking start playing new songs but the record just came out so like we can't just start playing new songs <laughs> like you know we got to play all the songs on the record because that's you know what, what you're supposed to do right. but there's a there'll be a lot of material will's already come up with a couple new song idea ideas and stuff so I think a new record is probably sooner than later, oh, which is yeah. in 2023, man, you got to fucking just keep putting shit out or else people lose interest. Yeah, that's, it's fucking crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's wild. I mean, we I think we're intentionally taking some space between the two because we do want people to like have a chance to really focus on this full length and we're touring doing like weekend tours um and then there's another tour that i can't say anything about because i don't think it'll be announced yet by the time it comes out but uh it's down to a festival i just can't say what festival <laughs> but there are cool things coming up lots of uh i think we're trying to play outside of baltimore as much as we can um you know the next big show in baltimore that i'm excited for is with fairweather and liars academy who are two great bands from the dmv um kind of pop punk emo adjacent stuff um very like cool old school equal vision records you know stuff i grew up on so i'm stoked to get to open for them um and then yeah just lots of you know kind of like one-offs or weekend tours like up north or down south kind of stuff yeah um when you live in maryland it's like you know it's not that hard to get to philly and 
DC and New York City and Richmond and stuff. That shit's all between like two and four hours. Right. Yeah, that's always the nice thing about like the East Coast for doing like weekenders. You can kind of hit multiple states pretty easily and a few shows in like those states. Um, like I'm in the Midwest where you can hit multiple states pretty decently, but you still have like a six and a half hour drive in between everything. So it kind of yeah. just really, you have to plan it out just right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, uh, we know. Yeah. We, we did our last run with pianos like that and it was nuts. Those drives were insane. Some of them <laughs> <laughs> for us, for what we're used to, but we're babies. Um, the last one I think was just objectively insane going from, minneapolis back to baltimore <laughs> but the last time <laughs> oh, yeah. tour is always insane if you're not doing a like month-long intentional you know circle or whatever you want to call it yeah if you don't have like those buffer dates to get you like kind of back home yeah doing a long haul because that's from minneapolis to baltimore that's got to be like what 20 hour drive at least i think so with all the stops and shit included it, it was nuts and like we had this like <laughs> fucking me and brett can both talk about it but um we had this insane experience where we didn't really plan ahead as well as we should have because we kind of just banked on being like, well, there will be a nice person at each show that will house us or somewhere. And that was the case most of the time. But after the Minneapolis show, we were kind of like, you know, struggling to like think of something. So we are like, ah, let's just get a cheap, shitty hotel. And we did that, but we got one that was like the worst hotel ever. And we couldn't even get into it when we got there. Like, there was no one there to check us in, even though they said they were going to on the phone. So then Max just found a random room key in the lobby and just fucking, like, found the room and it opened. It was gross and dirty, but we just slept yeah, in there for, like, like four hours. It was, <laughs> damn. Yeah. yeah it's, and then bounced. <laughs> it was just some rando dude's room who obviously just checked out. And, like, there was just, like, fucking trash everywhere. Like, it smelled fucking awful. But we, like, couldn't keep driving we were all so tired so we just like slept on the hardwood floor for like four hours and just got up and left and like kept driving yeah well uh open invitation next time you guys are in minneapolis more than welcome to crash at my place uh to oh, avoid any of that <laughs> <laughs> yeah we will take you up on that we had some really dope it wasn't all bad though like um Wow. Oh, Stalk and Spade. I'm vegan. I really fucked with Stalk and Spade. They had some really good vegan food. Those milkshakes were to die for. Key lime pie milkshake was banging. That made it all worth it. <laughs> I'm not vegan, and it was still fucking awesome. <laughs> yeah, we had a great time. I wish there were more, like, vegan, vegetarian, fast food-style places around here. There's not. Yeah, we have a lot of soul food vegan stuff that's good in Baltimore not so much on the like yeah just like McDonald's imitation vegan food like y'all have in the Midwest which I love Mm. Uh, before we start to transition I got like two things I want to bring up one uh, Brett like you mentioned you normally don't do covers at least you haven't done that in your previous uh, projects Mm -hmm. what's what was the with a spark that like opened up Dosser to doing these two covers in the near future? Um, I've always wanted to, uh, so I, I, I like Tears for Fears a lot. Um, and I've always wanted to, I, since I first heard that song when I was like a teenager, I kind <clears> of <throat> always heard it in this like slower, heavier, fuzzed out way, like in my head. And I thought it would sound really cool. And I've proposed it to other bands, but it just kind of like never happened. But once again, like I said, now that I'm writing the songs or half of them, I can just be like, no, we're going to fucking do this. (laughs) They were all down. Um, I just thought it would be cool with our sound, especially like this band tunes so low that it would just be like cool to hear like a, I don't know. Like, imagine if, like, the Deftones covered, like, Tears for Fears. That's kind of, like, how I thought it could sound. Like, the Deftones mixed with, like, I don't know, My Bloody Valentine or something. So, that's kind of how it sounds, and I think it'll, I don't know, I think it'll be cool. I think it translates pretty well. So, I just wanted to see if it could work, and then we we tried it at practice, like, a few weeks ago, and it sounded like exactly as it sounded in my head all those years is exactly how it sounded when we were playing it so i was like cool this is working oh yeah 
Yeah, so. it's a it's a fun one. Yeah, and same thing. I mean, I proposed the Dreams Cranberries cover to my old band, and I think they were kind of like, "What's that song, huh?" And didn't really like vibe with it as much. So I was like, "Ah, I don't want to push it." And then this one, you know, once I kind of showed them like what I did with it, y'all were receptive. But I I was like, I was unsure the first. I don't know if you told me this or I'm misremembering it. I feel like you proposed everybody wants to rule the world first to me. And then it was head for heels, but maybe I'm probably misremembering it. I think Eric was like jokingly like saying like, oh, that's the song we should do. But like, I mean, that could be. But yeah. we were all, we had this conversation drunk at one of our friends' band's release shows. So we're like in the middle of a crowd, just like, all right, we're going to do this. It's going to be sick, man. We're going we're to cover some songs and we're going to put it out. And, you know, we're like huddled up and there's like people everywhere and we can't hear shit. So we probably just, you know, you probably just heard Eric bringing that song up. and But that can be the yeah. next one. Yeah, whole Tears for Fears cover album. It can't be any less bad than Puddle of Mud's cover album they did of all the classic rock songs. No, or hell. any less... Or any less bad as any of the, uh, what's the first singer of Cannibal Corpse, Chris Barnes band? Six Feet Under, all the, like, classic rock cover albums they did as, like, the death metal band. <laughs> yeah, that shit is fucking awful, but in, like, the best possible way. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's, like, comedic gold. I love it. I, I absolutely, I, I'm, I'm like, take me down to cringe town. Like, Catatonic Use, basically, like, I had that idea in my head for years, I swear. I was like, ah, that's stupid. Who would watch just, like, a bunch of videos of, like, Band sucking, but apparently a lot of people. <laughs> and that guy's a genius. <laughs> it's, my it's my favorite thing to do before bed. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> or fucking bands playing, or anything really. Just anything cringy just makes me, just makes me feel warm inside. You know. <laughs> yeah, we were like, I don't know, like I feel like that was just the thing. My friends would be annoyed. They'd be like, "Oh, Will's got the YouTube again." He's high and he's got the YouTube. He's going to put on vocal cover videos with under 100 views. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I feel like if we do that again at the next recording session, Max might quit. <laughs> Max is our drummer and he has a way lower tolerance for fucking absolute boneheaded, stupid, fucking <laughs> cringy humor. <laughs> really enjoy so uh i'm always afraid that we're just gonna go too far <laughs> Do videos, like we're just gonna turn around and he's fucking gone <laughs> I, I feel like every band has at least one member that's just like okay like i i don't want to deal with this shit yeah, yeah they might like dip out that night but like they're for sure coming back still yeah no yeah. Max, oh, yeah. Max, max is like the most like stand-up dude ever he would he wouldn't dip out if, if he did he would like sit us down and give us like all the reasons why and ask <laughs> how we can work this. i've been him in other bands though to be honest like i was a fill-in for this band and their thing was they just kept playing the same life of agony song like every hour on the hour and like after a, that was like a 30 day -er, and like i was like i just can't do it anymore like it was kind of like, Brett, you said you messed with a former band member. You and did the, the Wrestle with Jimmy loop remix of the Weezer <laughs> Say It Ain't So song until the guy was like, let me out of the fucking car. <laughs> I, the guy up front I was, was that guy once. <laughs> but I was fully supporting it. And the dude that was driving was like having a breakdown over it. He was like, dude, if you fucking play this fucking Weezer bullshit one more time, dude, I'm fucking pulling the car over. I'm sick of being everybody's fucking dad. And like freaked out. Have you heard <laughs> Weezer thing? Um, I, I don't think so. Like I've heard, I obviously know the song, but I don't think I know the clip oh, you're talking oh, about. The song, uh, Say It Ain't So, it's like, there's the part in the chorus where he's like, da -na -na -da -da, wrestle with but somebody took that and replaced all the lyrics of the entire song like uh pitch shifted so they're still like the like the the theme of the song but the whole song is just him saying wrestle with jimmy <laughs> like bang, 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 wrestle with jimmy like it's just fucking it sounds insane when you're when you when we're done this just go to youtube i've been weezer wrestle with jimmy you'll laugh you'll probably cry because it's so funny okay. but 
we played it like probably 15 times in a row and this dude was just like not having it and yeah i guess he threatened to like quit mid tour so uh I, I, yeah. I mentioned this in a couple different episodes but uh i had some friends that were playing uh like in chicago and on their drive back one of the dudes uh played life's a highway just on repeat yeah uh, and he made it through like i think four or five times before anyone caught on that it was still being played the same like it was just uh, on repeat did yeah he do I can... different versions did he do like the og and then the rascal flats disney cars version i think he only did the rascal flats version <laughs> i love that i can see me i would have I could see me stabbing some of you because of that. <laughs> I can get down with some with some cringe radio country. I haven't put Brett oh. to the test with that yet. <laughs> it is fun. Uh-huh. All right. Well, we're already starting to tell stories. So as we're trying to transition uh, into the later half of this episode, I just want to make sure um, with Dosser, with the new LP, uh, I know we already talked some some upcoming singles and covers. But is there anything I missed that you want people to know about? Um, I guess records are. Oh, well, I mean, this wouldn't make sense when it comes out. I was gonna say records are coming. Just be patient because the vinyl delays suck. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we like. Uh, we know we want them just as bad as everyone else, but they should start shipping in April. Um, in a couple weeks, and yeah. Um, but we're but just really excited to share now, the songs with everybody. This won't matter. Yeah. But yeah, I'm just, I'm really excited for people to continue hearing the album outside of, you know, our, you know, scene and just like continue to play shows in different cities and stuff. I don't know. Uh, yeah, check it out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, everyone go check it out. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about uh, links to stuff uh, in a little bit. But before we get there, this is uh, my favorite part of the episode we're in the later half uh where we just kind of talk about some fun stories from you guys time of music um obviously we've already hit a few good stories but i'm sure there's some more in the wheelhouse uh they can be from tours shows time recording uh obviously you guys been recording some uh music videos and as i normally say they can be anything horrendous to tremendous or any adjective in between nice oh, yeah. oh man there's so many um i mean I feel like I'm trying to think of like some of the like really, really, really funny ones um, that are okay to share on a podcast. <laughs> oh, there is one uh, that's funny without naming names, and I'll 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 lean into it. I'll kind of let Brett fill in the blanks, but it's really funny. Um, one time we were playing a show, and it was like, you know, like we all were in the pandemic, and we we're all like really like you know just fiending to like go to a show you know like a concert and uh we get the show offer and it's a charity show and um me and brett you know being like we're like all right we're coming out of covid let's be cautious let's use our own mics you know mm. um so we both bought our own mics during you know the pandemic and uh we go to use our own ones and i think i gave the sound guy a heads up but brett didn't and he was this like older rock and roll dude <laughs> oh I'll, I'll let brett say what the guy said to him. I, I was like thinking, I was like, what the fuck show was that? But no, yeah, no, we just we were playing the show and it wasn't it wasn't like a big show. It was just, I don't know. It was at like a yeah. fucking but it, it was fun. There's a bunch of people there and we we're having a good time. But um yeah, I like took the mic off and set it aside and the dude just like fucking reamed me out. And I don't what did he say? I can't even remember, dude. Well, I was laughing because we always joke about the Limp Biscuit song rearranged and say, just think about it. And one time I said that at practice to Max as a joke, and Max thought I was being serious. And he's like, did you just tell me to just think about it? Because he just like was struggling with his drum part. I was like, nah, dude, I'm quoting Limp Biscuit." But the dude said to you, just coincidentally, he pointed at his head and said, just think about it. <laughs> and uh, like, yeah. Yeah. And I was like losing it because I was like, did, did this dude Eric- doesn't know he's quoting Limp Biscuit." Did Eric start baseline? I'm pretty sure he fucking did. He probably he probably did. <laughs> yeah, that guy was fucking pissed, dude. And I was like, Jesus fucking Christ, dude. I was like, sorry, dude. I would I just don't want to fucking get anybody else sick. My bad for uh trying to be courteous to the human. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll be honest, like I like 
you know, now it's weird because it's like standard bands just bring their own mics a lot of the time. But I look back on all those years playing all those like nasty punk houses and dive bars. And I'm like, oh, my God, like I get so up close to the mic. Like, how did I do that? That mic was not being sanitized. It's so gross. <laughs> yeah. I basically like suck on the microphone when I sing. <laughs> like borderline. Yeah. I'm like, I'm full on fucking like tonguing the microphone and I'm thinking like, man, I probably did this like prior and just didn't fucking realize it. But like, yeah, now we bring our own microphones everywhere. So. Yeah. We were, like, we, we were on tour and like we brought like the, I don't know what, like the, the, the foam, like the axle covers, rose. Yeah. yeah. Like for the mic or whatever. And like thinking back, like, yeah, we did that for most shows and like it kept us safe or whatever, but like what did that really prevent? Like we didn't, we didn't actually yeah. clean that shit. Uh, yeah. It just oh, gave yeah. a new fucking place to breathe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it was a really like strange, like edge in kind of thing. Um, but then eventually, you know, like things just got better. Thankfully over time, our release show was fantastic. Um, yeah. I mean, that's like a wild story in itself. I feel like of that entire day. Um, but <laughs> again, I don't know how much Brett's willing to share. I feel like I'm putting Brett on blast. No, but... <laughs> I'm telling you, I have a terrible memory as like, so I just started a new job like a couple months ago where I'm waking up like in the middle of the night, basically to go to work. So am I, I'm just like, I feel like I've just been in like a constant, like, days since i started so my memory is just like horrible like what were you gonna bring up oh just the fact that you were like you're working a job you're really unhappy at and that show was like our biggest show ever like over 300 people we worked so hard on it and that was the catalyst to like you just being like all right fuck it because like you just got in a huge fight with your boss just about uh, the show <laughs> yeah <laughs> age quit my job like a couple days ago <laughs> because Basically, like, long story short, I was on workers' comp because I fucked my back up really bad at my last job. And my boss was, like, trying to, uh, basically was trying to tell me that I was faking it. And I was like, why the fuck would I fake hurting myself, having to go to the fucking doctors, making less money than I made at work on workers' comp? And I went to a doctor that, like, your insurance sent me to and you got all the information from the doctor well why would i go through all of that and he's just like well well i i saw video proof that you played a concert and he's talking about a release show like because i don't know I, i'm like sort of friends with his son but i think his son like threw me under the bus or some shit because i was out that week but we had this release show booked for fucking ever so basically I took like a muscle relaxer and like drank a bunch of tequila just to get on stage to play the release show. So I was like, yeah, dude, standing in one spot for like an hour is much different than working a full 40 hour work week where I'm like lifting heavy shit up all day. So yeah, like our release show, like one of the best shows I've ever played is like the catalyst for me just fucking like losing my shit on my piece of shit old boss. And, uh, just fucking getting out of there, man. So, but it's cool. It worked out because now I'm at a job where I lose tons of sleep. <laughs> but gets no. infinite, infinite energy drinks for all of us. Every time Brad shows up to practice, yeah. I get a new flavor of Red Bull. And I was <laughs> when you were getting your headphones, I was like eating the carrot cake and drinking my Coke. I was like, yeah, dude, I work for a vending machine company and I just, it's bad because I can just take. <laughs> I want, which is like, I guarantee you, like this time next year, I'll be like hundred pounds heavier. It's gonna be awesome. I um, so the release show, my favorite story from it, just because I was thinking of like good moments of like stories, was um, my dad is like a really old fashioned guy, and he showed up to the venue, and he had never walked into this place in his life. You know, he'd only been to like, I don't even know if he'd ever been to a music venue in Baltimore City, to be honest with you but he shows up in a suit and a fedora. And I was like, dad, what the fuck are you doing walking into this like, you know, punk metal dive bar place? And it's a legit venue. Like I said, like it's 350 cap and all that, but like, ain't nobody walking in there wearing a suit, <laughs> you know, unless you were in the mighty, mighty ball stones, maybe or something. But it was just funny. So like on the mic, I was like, hey everyone, my dad's here. 
and he like stands up to like wave at everybody from the balcony and like it was really funny because you know brett kind of did a bit where he was like yeah we told will's dad to suit up but we meant adidas suit not like a suit suit <laughs> but I then oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> no I you're good gonna... I don't know if you're aware, but we kind of have this fucking stupid shtick where we all wear like Adidas tracksuits. Oh, in most of the band. Shit. Yeah, because I I think I saw it on like your Instagram where you say like uh like sponsored by Adidas also. Uh, that's right. It, it, yeah. This again, this harkens back to my obsession with Corn from the '90s. That and they were sponsored by Adidas, so that's why you see like Jonathan Davis wearing the like sparkly adidas tracksuits back in the day we'll get there don't worry we'll get there. but yeah, anyway I was, I was really hoping when you know yay lost his sponsorship that that would just like you know put us on you know yeah, but, yeah there but is not, that yeah, gap we, that needs to be filled yeah we've been tagging them and everything but you know still waiting to hear back i'm hoping our friend skyler from taking meds did this bit called 25 days of heineken zero and like just kind of harass them nonstop on social media, <laughs> making these unhinged videos. And then eventually they just send them a bunch of free shit, I think, to shut them up. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, but no, what I was gonna say to finish the suit story, and then I was gonna let Brett maybe take a shot at one. But um, when my dad showed up in that suit, people thought he was a narc, like the young people at the shows. And like they were like nervous to like hit their weed pens because that's such a normal thing now in 2023. And, like, after I announced he was my dad, my dad was like, oh, yeah, immediately just vape clouds around me. <laughs> like, they all were like, oh, Will's dad. Oh, okay. And then just, like, started ripping <laughs> pens. <laughs> Gotta rip pens in front of your dad, dude. <laughs> On my birthday, he actually was like, happy birthday, son. I just took an edible at 9 a.m. just to know how you're feeling. <laughs> I was like, dad, I don't even go that hard anymore, man. I'm I'm, like, closer to 30 now, like. 21 me for sure, but. <laughs> Good for your dad, man. Yeah. yeah. 9 a.m., that's like a power move. Yeah, I know. I know. I like, I'm like, I'm, if I took a gummy at 9 a.m., I'm in bed by 1 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> that's my wind down mode. That's what I learned at that show. Uh, Brett has a funny story about that. You, I was just like trying to survive. I remember through that set and chug water. Brett was like, yeah, you played kids, but it's almost funny because I played it at the speed that we probably shot the music video at when I first started, <laughs> and Brett literally went like this with his hands, like <laughs> signaling me and Max to like take it down a notch. <laughs> well, he ate an edible, and I could tell, like we started playing. At one point, I literally looked over at this during the set, and he just wasn't playing guitar anymore. He was just staring at me. <laughs> well, no, there's a story behind that, too. So that's... I what happened was my amp just coincidentally broke at that moment too. So my fucking um, like hardware in my amp, I just never had it checked out and it just took a shit while I was high as shit on this edible at this show. So not only am I like, you know, kind of paranoid, like, oh my God, this is too intense. I also like had a gear malfunction. So then our friends in CUNY who we just met that night, let us borrow their amp and save the whole fucking set. I think, honestly, I was like, that's why I was indebted to put them on a release show. I was like, you guys saved my ass from one of the most embarrassing moments. <laughs> no, that was cool. Uh, the show ended up, like, um, I just, uh, I remember, like, he started playing Kids, and that beginning part that's like, dee do dee do dee he started playing, it was like, dee do dee do dee do I was like, holy shit, dude. I was like, we can't, I was like, dude, that's like fucking triple time what the, the song is supposed to be. Oh my god. Dude, my dog just busted in here. What's up, buddy? All right, come here. Um, door locked. Apparently, you can open that shit. Um, I was trying to eat the cat litter. Anyway, I don't know. Whatever. That's the show ended up being good. So all is all's well that ends well. Yeah. After the the amp situation got fixed, then it was smooth sailing. Like felt a lot of love in that moment. But uh. You know, and then like everything else was cool, but um, the kids just went off, and I think that was also a time where we realized like college shows are really cool. We just did another one at this college in D.C. That one was at a college in Baltimore, and I don't know. It just it gives me a lot of hope to like play for these like you know late teens, early twenties crowds because like they'll still mosh. Like 
you know, they'll still like really get into it. They're not jaded and stuff mm-hmm. and worried about getting hurt. Uh, not that our pits go hard, like a end it pit or something, but you know, we're like just stoked to see somebody like have that like reaction to our music. Um, there's like a Baltimore music like meme page. And after our release show, someone posted, uh, take me back to the Dosser push pit where I felt safe. <laughs> I, I didn't know that. That's funny. Yeah, yeah. I, I can't admin reveal who it was, but I know who runs that meme page, and it was very funny, but I can't say, because he made a post about being like, stop revealing who I am. Uh, <laughs> fuck that, man. But, out here uh, f***ing people's dicks. <laughs> yeah, check out, uh, what is it? It's, it's like, because there's like Baltimore show place, and then the other one's like Baltimore shit place. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, so funny. Yeah. Oh, Lord. What are you doing? Brett, Sorry. do you have any st- stories that you want to initiate? Um, I, don't, I, don't, I mean, I'm just, like I yeah. said, I, but I'm, like, so foggy, man. I can't remember anything that happened past, like, two minutes ago. Like, I forgot I was doing <laughs> while while doing this podcast. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. Um, I don't know, man. I think I experienced some really weird shit and like touring all over the place with my old band, Room Runner. Um, slept in like I, I accidentally slept in a fucking uh, like meth lab once, basically, like just in a bunch of like this tweaker house and fucking uh, uh, where the fuck was it? Uh, Denver, like Colorado, I think um but i don't know the story is more just like kind of a bummer than cool um i i remember this we played the show once in a basement at this in this college town i think in iowa and this (laughs) this dude was uh playing this instrument that nobody could figure out what the fuck it was he was like doing this like experimental noise set and he's like, first off, he's dressed up like a fucking hillbilly out of like uh, the devil's rejects, but he has like this bleach platinum, like luscious, like uh, mullet. And it was like beautiful, but then he looked like absolute shit everywhere else and it smelled fucking horrible. And his name, his, his, his band, uh, Bozo. And, um, he was just like hunched over like he had the mic and he was like making this weird noise we couldn't figure out how he's making it and like he gets up and he's just blowing into this pocket pussy and it's hurting and making all this fucked up sound but he's putting it through like loops and shit like that so it sounds like a fucking like sounds like some like nightmarish shit and uh i just uh, i think i like yell i was like what the fuck is that he's like oh the pocket pussy I found on the dumpster like two weeks ago, man. <laughs> it's just like blowing into this used pocket pussy into a mic through some pedals looking like a fucking deranged like the hills have eyes, dude. This is like amazing fucking mullet. And I don't know, man. It just stuck with me. So sometimes before I, I think of Bozo just yeah, blowing into a pocket pussy in a shitty fucking <laughs> Des Moines it was weird it's, man. it's pretty new metal that it was in iowa you know our favorite slipknot album so that's true <laughs> and des moines where they're actually from in, in iowa yeah. oh shit so, yeah. maybe me on it. not i don't think i i mean this was years ago i don't know if they were unmasked yet no they probably were yeah so i know like was- one of my buddies used to work at like a target in in des moines and he like every once in a while he said that like he would see Corey taylor just like shopping <laughs> what do you say brett it cut out for me for a second uh, you're saying corley cory taylor cory taylor just like absolutely norm like just as normal as it comes yeah, yeah. i like to imagine that he was wearing like at least a Lisa leather jacket and like wanted people to know who he was but at the same time he's like shit no one knows who i am if they don't like actually listen to slipknot because i wear a mask the entire time yeah Damn. Yeah, yeah, we have. Uh, he doesn't live here anymore, but he lived here for a while. Um, the current singer of Cannibal Corpse, uh, Corpse Grinder, 
he was from like Dundalk or Essex somewhere out in like East Baltimore County. And people would say, yeah, you just see him like at Walmart with his kids, you know, just like pushing the cart, like buying groceries and stuff <laughs> like, and like, I think he collects stuffed animals. I think that's the thing I'm not making up. Yeah. That's a thing mm. on his Instagram, but yeah, it's funny. Yeah. Like when you see, you know, some like edgy rock and roller. It's like I grew up listening to like Day Aside and just like thinking if you saw the dude with like the backwards burnt cross, just like I don't know, like at his like I don't know, vet appointment or something. Right. It, yeah, it'd be super <laughs> like trippy. In the waiting room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh yeah, I, I don't know. It's just, you know, I, I love like one of my favorite parts outside of playing music, I think, is like meeting people. And um like that's why I think for years I missed touring so much and especially through the pandemic because like you know weird and good like I've met some of my best friends because of music but then also like I've met some of the weirdest characters like the bozo the clown people that uh Brett's describing too (laughs) (laughs) um yeah I'm trying to think like I don't know if like we've met too many like super weirdos and dosser yet um in nah, our travels. We... I don't think we have. Nothing like notable enough to talk about in this podcast. I did in my old bands more. I don't know what it was. Maybe it's just a free fear time in the earlier 2010s like you were talking about. <laughs> yeah, we'll, 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 hopefully we'll have met some fucking unhinged freaks by the next time we come on your podcast. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. By the time LP2 comes around, I'm just waiting. To, I can't wait to hear about all these crazy people you've met throughout the country. That would yeah. be the best part. <laughs> yeah, I don't think, yeah, like, I, in my old band, the weirdest guy was this guy. I, you know how, like, I mean, you you know, you've been talking about how you play in a band. After you play, like, if you're on tour and you're on a budget, you know, you're not sleeping in motels even. You're just, like, trying to find people's houses to sleep at. Yep. And I was just trying to figure out where to stay, and I was striking out. You know, I announced it on the mic, like, hey, if anyone's got a floor, literally anything, I don't care. It can be a garage that's not you know doesn't even have a rug i'll sleep in it like i don't care i just need a roof um and like this dude came up to us this like country bumpkin in like south carolina and he told us that we could park our van in the middle of a cornfield uh and take and stick our dicks between two ears of corn and make sweet cream corn i'll never forget that for the rest of my life (laughs) the most unhinged (laughs) perverted shit i've heard in my life but i'm like damn dude like you walked up to a complete stranger and said, <laughs> you know, just like the crazy people you meet in these like middle of nowhere towns in these middle of nowhere bars you play when you're a band, no one really gives a shit about at the time, you know, it's like really funny. Cause like, I, I always tell people, people come up to us and this is a thing. People are like, Oh yeah. Like Dossers maybe you have like this many monthly listeners. And I'm like, dude, in Baltimore and DC and stuff, you know, but like, I'm sure if we played a show in Des Moines, Iowa or whatever, like, you know, we'd probably open for Bozo the Clown. <laughs> I would welcome that. <laughs> you just got to find them for the next time you co- you go through Iowa and just be like, hey, man, uh, you don't remember me, but we've played one time. Do you still have the pocket pussy? Can you, can you, can you, rip, a, can you rip a set real quick? Yeah. Rip a fucking set. <laughs> He might have some new effects. He might have some new effects now. He might be like running it through some Earthquaker. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm a, I need to experience that sort of spiritual, um, you know, awakening that I had when I was watching him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then maybe I can link up with my man in South Carolina in the cornfield, the children of the corn. Yeah. <laughs> With a K. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, kind of bouncing off what you said, well, like, I I surprisingly didn't meet that many weird people on my time, like, on the road. Uh, I met a lot of amazing people that I'm still friends with today. Like, I'm actually originally from Iowa, and I live in Minneapolis now because of touring uh, with some of the people I met. Um, they got me to, you know, move states, jump ship, do all that fun stuff. Uh, but yeah like you were saying brett too like when you guys come on the next i can't wait to hear all these crazy fucking stories from all these like crazy people that you're going to encounter uh on your next few runs um but th- this this new lp 
it's super sick. Uh, like I've like I've said, violent picture, violent sound. Everyone, please go check it out. Uh, ten out of ten. I mean, can't go wrong. Thanks, man. Thank you. Um, if anyone's looking for Dosser merch, music, or just you guys in general, where can they find it? Um, I think probably for the merch, I would say reallyradrecords.com. Like, you know, look for them. Um, they do pretty much all the online stuff. We'll occasionally do online shipping from our band camp if we have like a surplus of stuff. But most of the time, I would say, you know, go to them for that. Um, music literally everywhere, any streaming like Spotify, Apple music. If you're a band camp head still, I respect you and I love you. <laughs> um, you know, you can get us at us there, you know, all the stuff. Um, but yeah, yep. but I mean, above all, come to a show. Yeah. Come to a show. Um, also, if you just go to our Instagram, that's kind of a hub for like, you know, got the, like the link tree link in there. And so it's Dosser MD is the uh the instagram handle so you know you can come watch all of will's fucking unhinged ass fucking videos that he posts on there. <laughs> yeah yeah i i am the guy with too much time because i work from home in tech support so you know sometimes when i'm running like a malware scan or doing like a operating system update i'll just be like all right i guess i got some time to make another like silly video um there's something missing with like you know what my shtick is lately is it's taking a band I love either um, like from here or elsewhere that, you know, is up and coming and I'll like show them some love by putting their music behind a scene of a band playing at a party in a romantic comedy. I miss that. I want to see bands and romantic comedies and horror movies again, just playing at a party by a pool, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, you heard all those links. I will have them in the description below, whether you found this episode on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, or the YouTubes, and you got to see uh, their lovely faces like I did tonight. Um, make sure you stay up to date with everything Dosser. Be ready for the covers. Be ready for those upcoming singles that will be out at a, a time to be determined. And, you know, keep an eye out for those hinted at but not confirmed uh, tour dates that are be, you know, hitting the, the social media airwaves at some point. Um, I know I'll be keeping an eye out. And if you're in those cities, definitely go to those shows. If they don't hit the Midwest, I can't go. So you go for me, experience a Dosser set for me. Um, I mean, Brett, Will. We'll be enough. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll be out there. I'm, I'm getting married this year, so I'm like reserving my paid time off for that in the honeymoon. But next year, my wife's going to be in grad school. So I'm like, all right, babe, you got this. <laughs> Hell yeah. See you in a month. <laughs> well, I can't, I can't wait. Um, like I said, you don't have to stay in a sketchy motel. I'll have plenty of couches uh, and, and space for y'all uh, to stay here. But, I mean, Will and Brett, it. like, this is a great, great start to the week. You know, like I said, it's it's Monday. Mondays, you normally suck. But I had a great time uh, chatting all things Dosser. And, um, like I said, this this LP is super sick, and I'm stoked for everything you guys got going on. Hell, yeah. Well, uh, we appreciate it. We enjoy talking uh new metal and uh pocket pussies anytime we can so um, and corn and corn both kinds Cre creamed yeah. uncreamed jonathan davis <laughs> me corn always starts with a k yeah. <laughs> thank you thank you seriously uh we really this was a lot of fun we love uh doing these especially when the hosts are as uh kind and personable as you are so Thank well, you again. Thank you. you so much. I appreciate that. Um, like I said, everyone go go follow Dosser, stay up to date, and uh, I'll catch everyone on the next episode. See ya. Peace. See you, man.